Hi everyone, it's Annas. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my tips for Boolean word stitch. Okay then, I'm going to show you what Boolean word stitch looks like. It's used for embroidering a rose like this. This looks better to explain. First, make a small bowl in the middle of a rose and then add petals around it. I'm going to do a review of the way to do a boolean stitch. Come up from the back, go down and come up almost in the same area you first came out of. Wrap the thread around the needle 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then gather the wraps. Pinch them with your fingers and draw the needle up. Make sure wraps aren't too tight or it's going to be really difficult to draw your needle through them. Try not to break the coils by pinching them with your fingers and pulling the thread little by little. It'll get wrappy if you pull it all the way at once. The key is to pull it gently and gradually. Then take your thread to the back. That's it. If you find that the stitches are lifting from the fabric more than you want, you can tuck them down. This is the first thing you do for bullion stitch. I'm going to add petals around a small bowl. Some people leave a gap between a small bowl and petals, but my design is quite packed to be looked like a real rose. Next. I'm going to do a long and thin one. Take the needle through at an angle of 180 degrees under from here, like this. It was shrunk earlier because I stitched it almost in the same area. The longer the length between going down and coming up, the longer it gets. Just repeat these steps. Wrap it around the needle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times. Gather the wraps. Pull it. It's not good to go this stretch. So pull it this way. It came at this direction a minute ago. Put it back where you attempt to place it like this. If you just pull it through, it can go wrong direction. Then take a thread to the back. Now we've done half of it. Then let's do the opposite side. Sometimes it is displaced by 180 degrees. This one leaves a gap in the top on purpose to make a flower big. The ends of the stitches are all overlapped rightly around here. After doing the right half, do the left half. And leave a little gap in the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then gather them. Pull the needle through. Pull it through little by little. Take the thread to the back. Three stitches are enough for the smallest flower. Like this one. It looks like a rose very much. If you want to add more petals, you can repeat the same process. The key is, if you go down and come up, almost in the same area, it will be shrunk and be a small bowl. But, if you take the length between them longer, it will get long. That's the difference. Then wrap it around 10 times. Some people do it 15 times or 20 times but when I did like them, I couldn't draw my needle the stitch got so scrappy, I made a mess so I decided to do it 10 times regardless of the length, I do it 10 times if the length is short like here, it gets bumpy a bit but it looks cute anyway if the length is long, it also looks well enough if you rub it too much, it'll get scrappy. So I try not to do so anymore. Rubbing 10 times can form a stitch well. 
And I think that's enough. By the way, these stitches called in various names according to books and people. Probably, the small ball in the middle is bullion knot stitch. We also use the word knot in French knot. Some books say it knot. It also means a small ball. And the longer one is bullion stitch. When I looked through it, there were so many ways to call it. I'm not sure which one is the correct way to call it. Anyway, these stitches are collectively called bullion word stitch. Have a try! That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.